Hello everyone. So I start my part four when I be here in Canada. Uh, correction to my part three. Uh, I I get here at December twenty. On my part three, I said twenty four. Sorry about that. So I get her in Canada on uh, December 20. So, hello everyone. Hello, Philippines. Um, you know, I'm really dark. I'm really dark in the summer because I need vitamin D in the winter because in the winter you can go outside it's so cold now I have to go and head to the sun every day and get vitamin D so I'm really dark you guys in the winter is a little bit white again so that's what I do, did in the summer uh, I have to go to the height of the sun to get a vitamin D because in the winter you can go outside okay guys oh thank you so much for my viewers and my subscribers Thank you guys. So this is my part four. But I'm here in Canada on December 20. And you know what happened when I left in Tora, when I left Philippines. So I've been wearing high heels and I never seen the snow and I don't have any jacket and we have a stopover in United States in LA so I have stopover in LA and then in Calgary to Edmonton on December 20 and I was so tired when I get her in Canada and it's minus 25 and I do not have any jacket, I'm shaking and the good things, my husband, he brought me a rabbit coat and, and snow boots because when I touch on the ground the snow is really really thick so it was so funny to see the snow on my life first time of my life and I thought when I was in the Philippines I thought that it just cold when you have your sweater be okay it's so funny when I was in the airport, go to the immigration, <laughs> and all my my big uh, luggage pull apart when it get touched down into Edmonton International Airport. That's so funny. Okay, I am on my uh, part four on my story, real story, about the little girl in the Philippines, from the Philippines. So, so when I get here, it's really, really cold, minus 25, and then uh, I don't want to get out. It's too cold for me. So, at least 
I have my snow boot, snow boot from that my husband bought me. So I'm not married when I get her because I was only engaged when by fiance. So it's so funny. Uh, in the airport, I'm wearing high heel, and in Los Angeles, we have a stop over there for maybe an hour. Maybe I could remember that's 1984, December 20, and then we have to ride to the bus going to the, the airlines from United States to Calgary and then Calgary to Edmonton. So I'm wearing bracelet, no jacket, no anything. And in LA is too cold. I'm really shake there, really good. And I was shivering like crazy because I'm only one don't have any sweater. It's in the middle of the winter. And so we have stuff over in Calgary. We have to change the flight again. And then I walk into the snow and I stuck of my high heel in the snow. So uh, I can't take it out because I don't have any socks. And it's minus 25. And, uh, and I don't have any jacket. So, like, I'm frozen so late for a few minutes. So, from, um, Ed, from Calgary to Edmonton, so it takes long hours to travel because I have to stop over. And I never, never get nervous even I'm alone and I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> That's so funny from the Philippines. And it goes to Canada and it's so cool there. Ah, oh, said I was born, I never seen any snow. And my husband to be, he never told me how it took like here in the winter. The good thing, he brought me a rabbit coat and snow boots. And then all my luggage fall apart in, in the airport of Edmonton. Oh, that's really funny. And then I get her around one o'clock night, the middle of the night. And I was so tired, so when I get home here, I was really tired. I sleep through the night. And then my husband is working. I'll be alone in the house. And so in the Philippines, before we don't have a dishwasher, I don't know how to use them. And the washing machine, we have a washing machine and the dryer. And then a few days, I take up all the curtains and I put in the washing machine and I put jabex. I put lots of jabex on the washing machine and all the curtains like turning to dust. I was crying there all day in the washing machine because I, I broke the washing machine all of the curtains that I was turned into dust. You can imagine that. <laughs> uh, that's my life here in Canada. In 
I was new here and then well I because my husband is working all day and I don't know how to drive and I be myself I have been crying all day because we live in the country and I don't have any friends and and I'll be alone all day and I really really lonely every day until my husband come for a while he cook supper when I get home and for a while he he cook breakfast he don't want to bother me waking up and then when when so I get her December 20 and then uh, according to my papers when I touch down in in the airport and they took me to the immigration and and registered and so on so on and they gave me a note on my passport that I have to get married within three months. So uh, it should be March 20 because I get here December and I should be married on March 20. So that's from the immigration, they give me only three months to get married here. So on on March, uh, before uh, get over, uh, I think that's February. We decide we decided to uh, get married in Mexico, and. And before the day, the due date of my immigration, I have to marry on March 20. So we get married in Mexico on March 20. And we married in, I think, a judge or in the church. I could remember. That's a long time ago, 1985. And so I don't have a flower girl. We don't have any relatives there. We don't have any friends there in Mexico. And we stay there for the whole month. So we, yeah, we live here in the February. And then until March, we are in, in Mexico for, and we get married here in Mexico at the day of March 20. I can marry 21, I got deported in the Philippines if I weren't married because my status is, uh, you know, is a petition as fiancé so and they gave me only three months to get married so we get married in Mexico on March 20 before the deadline is exactly exactly March 20 and and we don't know anyone and we get married in the church of Michiko. So what we did is we just grab two ladies for my uh, bridesmaid. And a one little guy um, for the ring bearer. And 
when you get married there, but I really don't know. Really, a lot of Spanish. I know only I'm good in Spanish for counting numbers, but a little bit of Spanish. Um, when we are in Mexico, they're thinking I am Spanish because of my colors, no? So, we spend, so after we get married, we only two of us going to the restaurant and eat. And then, uh, after that, uh, we spend whole months and then we go back here in Edmonton because we have to arrange all the marriage contract no? it takes a few days before we done the marriage contract and so we get back here in Mexico and then uh, so we get more marriage and I have to uh, go to immigration right away to represent my marriage contract uh, because of uh, um, Spanish, Spanish, all is Spanish language. So we have to hire, um, to hire someone to translate it, them in English. So a lot of work. So I have the Mexican marriage contract and I have Canadian English marriage contract. So I have to. So we have to get a lawyer to translate all those papers, our certificate of marriage in from Mexico. And after so we go in the immigration to report about my status and after that I have to get um, a card of um, employment insurance that insurance is the number is forever so when you go to work you need that when you go somewhere, you need that, and so when so after three months, um, we go in the big shopping mall, biggest shopping mall in Edmonton City, and. And I see the sign in the mall. We have been modeling agencies. Um, um, I like to um, to apply to be a model in advertisement. And then after after a month. Uh, they call me to 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 go to the modeling school to learn, you know, for uh, for whatever. <laughs> I really and so I did try and then I got accepted, and then after few days they call me to practice the modeling and I found out I was uh, pregnant so my husband said are you going to accept that modeling or you want the babies and I said well forget about the modeling and I keep this baby so I did um, and then 
And then uh, when I have my first baby, see, so beautiful babies. And I always in the window because I don't know how to drive so we can get out of the house. Um, the only thing I can get out of the house when my husband dropped me, dropped me to the West Edmonton Mall in the city until he get out of work. So that's a long day hanging around in the mall. So after I have my babies, I always in the window uh, crying because all my neighbors, you know, they're going to work. I go in the city, they get their grocery. So I have to get my grocery every Saturday or Sunday because my husband is not working, he's home. So he can drive me to the grocery. And the doctor and, and and it's already around one year. It's, it's really hard for me that I can't drive. And you know, it's hard that your husband is working in the city. You're only alone at home with the baby. That's all you do is doing housework and the baby, you know, and, and um, so after um, two years, yeah, after two years, I, I asked my husband if I can learn how to drive because it, here in Canada is really, really difficult without, you don't know how to drive. So I told him I wanna drive. You know, I have to go to school to drive. So I, uh, he decided to do that. So five o'clock in the morning before my husband go to work, I get up and because we live in the country, there is no bus or anything in here. You have to have your own vehicle. So, and then, uh, I learned how to drive. Um, I go, um, in, in the uh, city hall, in the registered office, to have my exam, you know, before you can get there, you can learn um, learning to drive. You have to get um, learner's permit. You have to pass the exam. before you, they can, if you pass the, the exam, they give you um, a student permit. So I did, you know, when I'm alone, I, every time I get out with my husband, I, I have a look of the, sa the sign on the road and, um, learning every word and uh, so I went to school for driving and and usually yeah five o'clock in the morning and my husband has to drive me there before he go to work he, he left at home 
7 o'clock. So, 5, of, 5 o'clock in the morning, I was in the driving school. For an hour only. And, you know, uh, when you go to driving school here, uh, you know, all you, you know, oh, you, you know everything. And so I did practice and, and practice until I, I, I have to go in, in the driving school, I have to go again in, in, uh, uh, schooling before I have to uh, a student you I am a student first so we have uh, a teacher oh, we are not learning in driving yet so we we um, watch uh, video and the video and exam every day, oral exam, and they give me um, a booklet that how to learn to drive, and you know when you're driving it's your responsibility to drive because you can have your license but you don't know how to drive in the road, how you you have to bear the rules of Canadian. So, after that, so we have lots of exam. And my son is really sick when I was in, um, at the school of the driving. And, well, I passed my, my oral exam. And then, we go for driving and um, I go to school twice because it's better for me to more knowledge for driving and, and after that so we need, I, I, at least I have two seats of the uh, uh, schooling for driving. Watch, watch in TV and then exam and exam. You have to pass in the exam to before you, they can give you a uh, uh, learner's permit. And, and you know. Um, it's not that cheap here to go to school uh, a student for le for driving it's very expensive and if uh, you are new driver your insurance is really very expensive though because you just um, the learners so I take so many classes of in the driving and all those classes you have to pass the, the exam and then when you pass them you go back and then you can have your learner's permit and then you have to get that the you know the teachers in uh, 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 they call that um, uh, you have to drive with the uh, instructor in uh, the um, in uh, CEC is my instructor for driving so we drive and we drive and you know because Filipino mostly during this time is is rather 
utility nung is driving. And after that, I pass on and then after I uh, with the instruction instructor, my teacher. Uh, we're going in Edmonton. We drive all over the places, especially in the stop sign, in the um, uh, train. Um, you know, you know how to to drive. Really good driver. And and then. When you pass again for the driver's instruction, um, you have to go again in the register, registrar, registered, registrar, whatever, and then you have to uh, get um, a final exam. A final exam is the instructor for from the government. You have to pay. Um, if you don't have a car, you can rent with them. Um, if you don't have a car available right away, you can you can rent, but you have to pay, no. Um, your final uh, GA, I, I really forget already for a long time. And then final exam to get your um, driver's license. And you have to have only um, uh, three mistakes, the maximum. You have to pass all the exam on the road with the um, from the government, the professional drivers, and then after that, uh, I pass the exam. Um, and I got my driver's license. Because I passed the exam, so I, I get my driver's license. And then at home, I practice driving outside. I'm still nervous to drive. So after that, I drive everywhere to the doctors, groceries, and so on and so on. And, and now I have two children, one girl and a boy. Um, and I was so happy with my kids. They are really nice kids and um, smart so and that's it for tonight I will continue my stories about my life here in, in Canada um, how my life go on and go on here without any relative and friends so it's so hard for me but I have uh, neighbors they are so nice uh, they always I have very they this friend here in our neighbor she is very helpful to me um, and uh, she helped me a lot so that's the end of my story tonight.
subscribes it's free and likes and share and thank you to everyone for my next another story okay guys okay bye